Hi guys, welcome back to my channel Spare Parts and today I'll be doing another LEGO Star Wars review video and today I'll be reviewing set number 75054, the at, -AT Walker. It's a pretty big set. Anyway, this set came out in the year 2014 and came with 1,137 pieces, so pretty fair amount of pieces and it retailed for $120. That sounds pretty good at first glance, but we'll see if it's actually worth it. Taking a first look at the set, you can see that it comes with five minifigures and you kind of have to move the camera up to see the full thing. It is a pretty decently sized set and a good sized at, -AT. I'd say it's pretty good scale for the minifigures. But yeah, it comes with five minifigures and here's the walker. Let's take a closer look at the walker. I'm probably going to have to hold the camera for most of this review, so I apologize for the, say, shaky footage. But anyway, we'll start with play features. The first one, of course, being the legs are poseable. As you can see here, I have it in this walking stance, which I really like, but you can kind of move them if you don't like it. I won't really move them here because it might collapse. I guess I can try. Just move right there. Yeah, this can move and this can move. You can see there's some joints on the side. So you can kind of have it any way you want. Yeah, it's going to fall if I move it. But So I recommend kind of keeping it like the way I had it. Or just keeping them all straight. It, it works either way. But anyway, moving on. Actually, there is one more poseable joint down here. These legs can kind of tilt a little bit, but you can't really use it for anything unless you were to have it climbing a hill or something. But anyway, up at the head, there aren't really that many movable cannons. Like, I kind of wish there was, like, some features. Like, I know on a newer model, they had, like, the cannons go back and forth. I think that was the UCS one, but I don't know. It would be kind of cool if they could rotate. But anyway, there are some spring-loaded shooters, and you can see them from the back. They're pretty well hidden, I must say. You can only really see them if you look like that. But you just kind of push down here, and then they fire like that. Yay! Oh yeah, and also the head can kind of move. Not really that much though, because then it kind of hits right here and then stops. And sometimes it'll push this open a little bit, which isn't good. I must say, I don't really like the neck on this thing a lot. It seems pretty weak. Like the neck comes down a little bit sometimes, like it falls off. I don't know. But it can move a little bit if you wanted to. All right, we will open it up now. So this is the cockpit of the walker. Here, I'll kind of move the camera up so you can see. There's two seats in there. So this is what it looks like when they're sitting in there. As you can see, there's not that much room. They're kind of like cramped together, and it's not very accurate, but it's nice that they could fit two in there at least. I really like it. And on the front here, I guess we'll take a closer look at it later, but there is a control panel. And then moving on to the rest of the interior, we'll start here. We'll start at the front. I mean, this isn't much of an interior, but... You can open up these things, you can open up this so you can get in. You can open up this and you can kind of see the Technic inner working. I don't know, it's not really used for anything, it's the same on the other side. But what I used to do when I was younger is I would like put some snow troopers like inside this thing, just on the side and then close it. Like it's not really for that. You can't you can use it for that, but really it's just some technic in there. And then we will move to the back now. And this is basically the same exact thing. There's just some Technic. I mean, I don't know, maybe for the time they weren't like, LEGO wasn't advanced enough to maybe like put the Technic somewhere else and have this as an interior. But I know on the newer models, this was used for like a speeder bay and stuff. And I would have much preferred that because like, you can try to stuff a snow trooper in there, but it's not very good for the minifigure. I mean, that kind of fits. Honestly, the back has more room. But anyway, we'll move on to the like actual intended interior area. And that is right in the middle. And you just open this up. Mine is very squeaky for some reason. I think it might just be because it's old. I tried to disassemble it and put it back together with new joints, but it's still pretty squeaky. But anyway, in the interior here, here, I'll open up the other side so you can get a better look. So this is the interior space. It's kind of empty. That's kind of one problem I have with the set. I kind of wish there was like some seats in the inside instead of just this. But what you can do is you can put your troopers in there, which is pretty nice. Like... It's pretty spacious. You can fit them all in there. Let's put them in there. Put one, you can put like, there's like this gap in the floor and I'll show you what that's for later, but you can just kind of stick them in there one by one. Yeah. So yeah, they do all fit in there. I just, I won't put them in their spots right now. But anyway, moving on to another play feature inside here, which I have mixed feelings about this next play feature. And that is there is a trap door that opens in the belly of the walker that lets troopers like fall out. I don't really know the point of it because it's not in the movie, but you just put one right here. Kind of just put a trooper. It's kind of hard to get them to line up with the door, but I think he might fall. And then in the back here, there's this little thing that sticks out and you pull it. 
and it opens and then yeah he just fell to his death you see it's a nice feature and all like to show the snow troopers like falling into battle it's pretty cool but I don't really understand why they decide to do that I feel like they could have put something else in there like some chairs or like an e-web blaster I'm basically just talking about the newer model of the AT, at and how much I like that one but I feel like they could have put something more in here instead of just a trapdoor. I mean, I know it's it requires a lot of space for this to work, and it's it's kind of cool for kids, but I don't know, I would have preferred something else. So here is what it looks like with all troops inside the walker. I'll give you a view from the other side as well. Yeah, so they do fit in there, it's really nice. And they can just close it up, and then they can be carried into battle. All right, what are my opinions on the design? Since this is a pretty big set, they had to make some design choices here. Well, I guess they do with every set, but there's a lot more noticeable ones here. And the first of that being the shovels as the cannons, which I think looks pretty cool. These are actually shovels, and I think that's super funny, and I really like that a lot. But anyway, moving on from that, they have some they have this weird cannon thing down here. I'm not really sure what this is supposed to be, but I think it's accurate. And then the legs are pretty nicely designed. The only problem with them is like if you look at them from this side, it's just a bunch of exposed technic, but that's kind of what all the walkers are like, so I guess it's okay, it'd just be nice if they covered it up a little bit better. I think the feet look pretty good. And then at the back, there's some nice greaveling and stuff. So yeah, overall I feel like the design of the walker is pretty good. There's not a lot of like cracks, except maybe on this bottom right here you can kind of see some technic. But overall I think the design on this thing is pretty good. On to weak parts. So if you were an eagle-eyed viewer, you might have noticed that there is one of these missing from right here. And that is because... These things are so loose, it's just crazy. Like, even when moving the legs, sometimes they'll just fall off for no reason. Like, they just pop off, and then you have to go find them. It's really annoying. Like, they fall off all the time. It's, I don't know why it's such a weak connection. It's like, they're just in between these studs, and then they fall off all the time. It's really annoying. So yeah, that's basically, like, the main weak part of the set. I'm not really sure if there are any others. I'd have to think back to when I played with this a lot. But I think really that's the only weak part in the set. It's so annoying though. <laughs> Alright, now time to talk about stickers and prints. So, I don't think there are any stickers in this set, to be honest. I think there's only one print, and it's the control panel in the cockpit here. I'll take out these guys so you can see it better. Hmm. I don't really know how I'm going to get you to... Here, I'll just take it off. There we go. That'll work. So, there we go. This is the control panel piece. I'm not really sure what it's supposed to be. It just has like some dots and stuff on it. Kind of a weird choice. I don't know if it's exclusive to the set, but it's kind of weird. Only print in the set. Taking a look at the five minifigures in the set, the first one being General Veers, and he is the general on board one of the AT-AT -AT walkers during the assault on Hoth. And I think he looks pretty good. I always thought that his legs looked like miscolored because his torso is like really dark blue and his legs are gray but that's just his armor so that's how it's supposed to be but he looks really good he has a nice detailed torso and he has a nice head helmet thing I'm not sure if that's unique or not I think it was new for the time but I'm not sure they have a newer one now and on the back yeah he's actually a pretty detailed back right here I'll pull off the helmet so you can see yeah, it's pretty detailed, and surprisingly, he does not have a second face. He just has this one stern face with the headset on the side. Next up is the at, -AT pilot, and I think he looks really cool. He has a nice new helmet piece, or at least I think it was new. It's really detailed, and he has a nice torso printing and leg printing. Super nice. And underneath the helmet, he just has the normal angry face, so I guess that's expected, but... Another weird thing about the helmet is on the back, it kind of like cuts out. I think the TIE Fighter pilot helmets do this as well, but it just looks weird to have like part of his head out the back. But anyway, his back is also very nicely detailed, and overall I think he's a really nice figure and very high quality. Moving on, we have the Snowtrooper Commando, and I think the only difference from him and the normal Snowtroopers is that the normal Snowtroopers wear a backpack, and he doesn't, he just has nothing. But he looks really nice, and something that I think a lot of people will appreciate about him and the Snowtroopers is that they have wastecapes. I mean, they get pretty beat up after a long time, but recently LEGO has put, like, no wastecapes in LEGO Star Wars sets or on minifigures that should have them. I think he looks pretty good because of that. He has nice printing on his torso, and then underneath the helmet, 
he has an angry face. Here, I won't even pull up the helmets on the other minifigures because they all have the angry face. But finally, we have the two normal snowtroopers, and I think they look really nice. I forgot to mention with the snowtrooper commando, I think the the helmet piece or the hoodie thing is new. I'm not sure, but it looks really detailed and pretty modern, so I'm guessing it was new. And they have some nice torso printing. I think there is a slight difference between the torso printing of these two guys. I, I think, yeah, he has this weird gray piece right here, and they have red dots. I don't know. It doesn't really make that much of a difference, but they have these nice backpack pieces, which have, like, a printed piece on there with some really detailed accessories on it. And then they have the angry clone face, of course, underneath their helmet. So, yeah, pretty detailed figures as well. Nice waist capes. Time to talk price for piece. So, when this set released in 2014, and you if you bought it, you would have paid $120 and gotten 1,137 pieces. So, that's pretty fair. It's a little more than 10 cents per piece, but I'd say it's still fair, because there are some bigger pieces on this set, like this one and this one. So, yeah, for if you were to buy it at that time, I'd say you got a good deal. Nowadays, I'm guessing it's a little bit more with inflation. But since you can't buy it nowadays anyway without paying a lot on eBay, I'd say it was a pretty fair value at the time. So overall, my final opinion, I think I'm going to give it two ratings. One for the displayer or the collector, and one for like playability. So for display, I think I'd give it probably a 9 out of 10, because it looks amazing on display, just with like some cracks in the sides down here. And also, it is kind of hard to get to like a point where you want to display it or like because a lot of pieces fall off while you're trying to move it but anyway I think it looks really good for display it has some great minifigures too for the collector so yeah and then for playability I think I'd probably give it like a 8 out of 10 or a 7 out of 10 just because there's a lot of weak parts and I feel like the interior could have been a lot better so yeah I pr probably averages out to be like around 8 out of 10 or a 9 out of 10 so I still think it's a pretty good set I just wish the interior was a bit better. So there you have it guys, that's my review of set number 75054, the AT-AT. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.